Hi, I'm Jennifer Fox with musiceducatorresources.com and today I thought I would go through the new digital music games. I'm really excited that I have these in the store for you and I've received a, quite a few questions that I thought it would be good to do a little tutorial video showing you your options um, and how to use those options with your students, whether you're online or in person. So the very first one that I thought I would go through is the QR code because this makes life so much easier regardless of whether you have your students in person or um, if they're online or whatever. So I printed my QR code um, smaller. You'll notice if you hit the print and you want to print it, you don't have to print it by the way. You can simply send the JPEG. You can text it, email it, um, send it to whatever uh, teaching platform that you're using you can, and so I can send them the JPEG of the QR code inside there or I can send them links either way so it's totally your preference but I, I print mine out small when I do print them if you want you can print them out the full size and if you're going to be showing them like say like you're online um, doing a lesson on zoom or facetime or whatever you're using you can show them the qr code in the camera and they'll scan it um, from there so super easy that i'd show you i'm going to use my ipad here and i'm on my camera that's my camera app. and so i am scanning and it just popped up to open the link and there's the game right there. There we go. And the student simply just presses start and then starts playing the game. It's that easy. Um, so there's the QR code option. Now, if they're not, if they don't have anything separate to scan with, then I would suggest sending them the link and I'll explain how to do that right now. So if I were to send them a link instead of sending the QR code, I would want to go to the read first file first. And that is the file you always want to start with. Um, if you see anything that says read first or TOU, always start with those. So read first, and I'm going to be using the leapfrog staff intervals as an example. So I give um, some basic things about what's included in this file, etc. And then right here where it says leapfrog staff intervals, I am going to be able to click that. So I click it. So now it's going to open up the game on Google Slides right away. And so all they need to do to start playing is hit tap to start, and then they start playing the game. Now, at the top, there is a URL. So all you need to do is click that, click copy, and then paste, and then um, send it to them. So nice and easy. Now, if you are... Um, wanting to have them play during a lesson with you, a live lesson, um, they, you won't be able to see their screen unless they actually share their screen with you. So for example, if you're using Zoom and they have that sh screen share, make sure your settings allow the student to screen share with you. Um, so you wanna look at that first in your settings to make sure that it's set for them to screen share if you want to see them playing. Mm -hmm. One other thing I wanted to mention really quick so I don't forget is uh, you can add, if you're doing like a group lesson and playing these games, you can add a challenge where, um, you know, you could create a race and have them, you know, not push that start button until you say go. And then they, they go and whoever's done um, can, Click on a reaction if you're using Zoom, a thumbs up or a clap or whatever. Um, or they can just say done and you know see who got it done first. And if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, have them time it and see how quick they can do it. Because these games do go up by fast, especially if they know their stuff. Now, if they don't know their stuff very well or they're kind of struggling with things, the game does start over. So it, does, it will take a little bit more time to play and um, which is fine because it gives them more repetition to play through the game. So just a heads up on that. Okay, so now let's go to our offline options. We have our PDF and our PowerPoint. So this works best if you are, um, if you have the students with you in person, you can just have the PDF open and they can play it 
on the iPad or whatever you have them playing on or PowerPoint. So either one, it pretty much works the same. So I am going to just screen share the PDF option. So here I have the PDF open right here and I have the page navigated. So it's just showing one page at a time. So I just click on tap to here to start and and they go and answer the questions. If they make a mistake, the game starts all over. <laughs> okay, so that's your PDF option. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the PowerPoint option. When you click on the PowerPoint link in your file, the game is going to start right away. So let me just go ahead, I, I just clicked it, so now I just wanna and show you what it looks like. So that's the PowerPoint. And again, they just tap it and they start playing. So gives you an example of the PowerPoint. So nice and easy whoops, on that option. And the times that you want to use those offline is when you, you don't have internet access or you don't want to worry about internet access, that kind of thing. Those come in really handy. Okay, well, I hope that helped as far as all your different options with the games. Um, most of them will have all three or four of these options. I guess you have Google Slides, you have PowerPoint, you have PDF, and then of course you have using the QR code option for the Google Slides, and you have the just sharing the Google Slides link. Um, so lots of different options for whatever you um, whatever your circumstance. So I hope you enjoy the games. Happy teaching. Bye.